Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash I don't work here, lady. Where Karens confuse regular customers as employees and they won't give up no matter what. And in this episode, guys, oh boy, you'll be shaking your heads guaranteed. Guys, we've got Karens stalking people, destroying property, attacking others, getting arrested. It's a good one. I hope you guys enjoy the tales today. And as always, you can send or link your post to this email right here. So for some context, I've been a Lyft driver for four years, but haven't been since COVID started. I don't have my app in the window, but I still have the sticker on the car. On this day, I have an online order for a pickup at Walmart for some supplies I need. So I'm driving into the parking lot and I'm searching for the pickup parking spots. I drive by the exit door looking for these spots when I see a woman eyeing my car as she walks out of the store. At the same time, a car attempts to pull out and nearly hits me, but it doesn't. As I start to move forward, the woman stands next to my car yelling, smacking my car window screaming, Hey, you're looking for me! I vigorously shake my head no and pull away, thinking if I make another circle around the parking lot, she'll be gone wrong. So I'm driving back and I can see the same woman standing by the exit glaring at my car. I avoid eye contact this time, hoping she realized her mistake and moved on. I pull up and wait, eating a bit of my dinner while I do so. All is going well up until this point. As I'm eating my mac and cheese, watching a video on my phone, I hear someone angrily yell, are you not a Lyft driver? I look over, and it's the same woman on my passenger side. The woman had walked five rows from the exit to track me down. She begins yelling and gesturing at my sticker asking, Why aren't you picking me up? It's your job! At this point, I felt ignoring her would be less than ideal, so I rolled down my passenger window just enough. I then look her in the eye and calmly said, Ma'am, I'm not working right now. Hearing me say that, she throws her hands in the air, looks around wildly and says, Give me a ride right now. Again, I told her I'm not her Lyft driver and suggested she contact her driver through the app. She then yells at me, Well effing great, where's my effing driver then? I just quickly rolled the window back up as she stormed away. I feel like this shouldn't have to be said, but please double check your app with the Lyft or Uber driver you're getting into. And don't stalk strangers in their cars. Okay, I will give her this though guys, OP's car did have a Lyft sticker on it, which does give Karen a reason to make that assumption. And guys, I've never used Lyft or Uber, but I'm pretty sure it says what make and model the vehicle is, right? And seriously, you'd think that with all the shady stuff that can happen, and with all the true crime stuff out there right now, people would be way more wary. Especially when it comes to getting into a complete stranger's car and demanding rides when they repeatedly tell you that they're not your driver. This person says, I've had people get into my car while I was waiting for my actual driver. When I tell them I'm not their driver, they'll say, it's fine, you can take me instead. Like a complete stranger will go ahead and pay for their trip, no problem. The most persistent ones, however, will usually get out once I crackle my taser. Some people just shouldn't be allowed in public. And while we're on the topic of people mistaking others as their drivers, guys, this next Karen is something else. Alright, so this happened in Germany, where English is not the official language, and Uber or a service like that is not operating here. I was visiting a friend in another town. When it was time to go back home, I offered to drop him off at a train station so he can go to work his late shift. So I drop him off, and as I don't know the place, I sit in my car and start Google Maps on my phone to take me out of this town. Suddenly, I hear my back door being opened. I assume it's my friend, and he forgot something in the car, so I ask, without turning around in the German language, since we live in Germany, what did you forget? That's when an angry voice shouts back and says, I don't effing speak German, speak English if you want more business. Now take me to this hotel. Now I do take a moment to process what's happening, and then I say, I'm no taxi, sorry. Would you please get out of my car? Of course, the woman's having none of it, and she shouts, Don't you lie! I saw this guy getting out of your car, and you're on your phone. Now take me to this address, or I'll make sure you won't ever get any more customers. Ever. Now, my initial shock faded away, and I realized that there's a woman I don't know in my car, which is not a good thing. So I start calm and try that approach, since you never know. And after that didn't work, and Karen's getting more and more aggressive, I say, Woman, I'm no taxi. Now get the F out of my car, or I'll call the police. 
The woman then looks at me puzzled. She opens the door, and I'm happy that she leaves. What I didn't see coming, though, was her reaction. I still have to enter my destination to Google Maps, and luckily, I had the idea to lock the doors of my car before doing that. Because while I was fiddling with my phone, she must have seen this. She comes to my driver's side window and screams, I know you are, you effing liar. Now tell me your name, and I will make sure you get banned. She then pulls on the handle, realizing it's locked, and then she starts pounding on the driver's side window and then spits at me. Good thing there was a window. The woman is still screaming, and she proceeds to smash her handbag on my hood over and over again. At this point, I was done with her. Now, my car may not be of value, but this woman will not smack it and add more dents to it. I was about to get out of my car when I see two police officers leaving the train station, so I just honked over and over again. This made this stupid woman more aggressive, but it also made the police officers aware of the situation. The two officers run to my car, one then detains the woman, and one comes to my window to ask what's going on. And this is the point where the woman made her mistake. While being grabbed by one of the officers, she screams, Oh, what the F do you want now? I'm being arrested because he won't take me to my hotel? Oh, kill me already! Well, saying that was a mistake. What happened next might be due to the language barrier between Karen and the officers. They must have only understood the kill me part and saw the actions of this woman. So after they talked to me and I explained to them what happened and that I don't know this maniac, they came to the conclusion that she was nuts. One officer said that she needed to be locked up in a psych ward and that they were sending her to a psychiatric hospital. They then load her up in their car. Now, I don't know if she was or not or if she was released the next day, but even thinking about the woman having to stay one night in the psych ward left me giggling the two-hour drive back home. Well, ain't that something, guys. If you don't drive me to where I want to go, I'll just trash your car. Like, good thing the cops were there when they were, though, or who knows what she would have done. Like, for goodness sake, she tried to open OP's car doors. And what do you do at that point? Like, do you floor it and hope she doesn't jump in the way of the car? Do you just sit there? Or do you get out and fight? I have no idea what I would do, guys. But this person comments, She was sent to the hospital for a psychiatric evaluation. In my mind, that's a much better punishment than being arrested and charged with a crime. We aren't treating you like a criminal, we're treating you like a lunatic. That's much, much better. Let me know if you agree, guys. I'm sorry if this doesn't belong here, but I think it might fit. During college, I worked for an independent catering company that mainly did weddings. Now, people tend to be either very nice or very mean at weddings to wait staff. And the company I worked for didn't really care about the customer, so I always tried to go out of my way to make everyone's experience better. Because my company was independent, it means that we would travel to whatever venue the wedding was being held at. And we didn't actually work for that venue. So after dinner at this specific venue, I was bussing plates, and I had a full stack of about 10 plates in my hand with silverware in between them. I was walking quickly, trying to get back to the kitchen without being in anyone's way. And that's when this woman tried to flag me down as I was coming towards her. And I stopped quickly to say, I'll be right back ma'am, I just need to set these down quickly. As I start to walk away, she grabs the back of my arm and she squeezed it, which made me drop all the plates I was carrying. Luckily, only a couple broke, and she just sat there and scoffed while I picked them up. Once I was done cleaning, she snapped her fingers at me, and she did the finger signal to move in closer. And that's when she says, Now that you're done being a klutz, where's the gift table for me to put the gift for the bride and groom? Now, I was so taken aback that she would even talk to me this way. I explained to her that I only worked for the catering company, and I wasn't sure where the venue has that station set up. She then responded by saying, Well, you need to do your job and find out then, don't you? In the most condescending tone that I've ever heard. Now, normally, if a guest was nice, I would have been more than willing to find the wedding planner and ask, but not this time. At this point, I was done being treated poorly at my job by people. And it was one of those moments that I didn't really care if I got fired or not. So I got on my knees and I start bowing to her saying, Yes, master. Of course, master. Anything for you, oh great one. Seeing me do that, the woman turned red in the face. She was pissed and her husband was mortified. I got up, looked around the room from where she was sitting, and I could see a table with gifts on it. I then pointed and said, I think it's over there. You can see it from where you're sitting. And I hope that no one ever talks to you or your kids if you have them, like you talk to me. At this point, she was speechless, and she seemed embarrassed. Her husband said, I'm sorry, to me, and they left shortly after. 
I didn't get fired, but I chose to quit a couple of weddings later, after some more unfortunate events. Wow, Opie handled that brilliantly, if you ask me. And hopefully with what Opie said and did with the exaggerated bowing, that Karen's gonna think twice before she berates random people. For the record, I do work at Walmart, and I did at the time of the story. My oldest niece goes to college just a couple of hours drive from my home. Every so often, I would make the drive out on my day off to visit her and make sure she has everything she needed. My niece walked almost everywhere, and most stores she needed were within walking distance, except the local Walmart. So during a visit, she thought of a few things she needed from the store, which was no big deal, so we head over there. We wander around and gather the supplies she needed, and we were looking over the game case, commenting on some recent releases and mulling a purchase. And that's when Karen enters. She says to me, excuse me, I need a game out of here, would you unlock it for me? I say to her, I'm sorry, I don't work here, but this guy right over there has the keys. I also want to note that it's my day off. I'm not in anything that could remotely be construed as dress code for Walmart. Karen says, no, no, I recognize you. I know you work here. Please stop being another lazy person and get me that game. Again, I say, ma'am, I'm sorry. I don't work here. I can't open any case. She then says, shut up. Look, I get it. You're lazy. You're flirting with a good looking girl right there that you think will let you get in her pants. You work here. It's your job to provide customer service. I say to her, ma'am, this is my niece. She attends college here. I don't even live in this town. Please leave. And that's when Karen interrupts me and says, what's your manager's name? I'm going to file a complaint. I swear you work here. At this point, I realized that I can have a little fun with this, especially as my manager at the time has a love of snarky behavior and a no-nonsense attitude when it comes to customers like this. So I give Karen my manager's name and cell phone number, knowing he was also off that day. He listens to the complaint and then asks which store she's in because that doesn't sound like the kind of person he wants working under him. Karen's confused, but she gives the college town name. I then hear him laugh over the phone loudly. He then tells her in no uncertain terms that I don't work at that store and to leave me alone. He then hangs up before she can get a word in edgewise. Karen gets angry and says, oh, very funny. Getting some friend of yours to cover for you? Now get me that game. At this point, the actual associate comes up and asks which game. She angrily points at it and he unlocks the case and gets a copy out. She then says, at least someone around here can do their damn job. You need to tell your coworker right here to stop thinking with his D. The local associate says, ma'am, he's another customer. He doesn't work here. Karen replies, another effing cover story. The employee says to her, ma'am, please don't swear. There's children nearby. Karen says, swearing? Honey, this is nothing. F you and your whole effing store and your effing horny Fs who won't do their effing jobs. F your store. I'm going to GameStop. Now this attracts the attention of the store manager who comes over to see what the commotion is. The store manager says, ma'am, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. You're harassing other customers. You're also belittling my staff and your language is not appreciated in Walmart. The exit's this way. If you don't want to leave of your own accord, I can have the police escort you out. It's at this point it finally, finally sinks in that I was telling the truth all along, and all color drained from Karen's face as she slowly walks away, abandoning her cartload of merchandise. I noticed her again on the way out, and I just waved, and she looked away, staring blankly into her steering wheel. Hey, at least she realized it in the end, right? Because some people will double or even triple down getting cops involved. And again, this is why you don't berate random strangers. Like, she launched into that stupid, meaningless tirade for nothing and got embarrassed in the end. So here is some quick background to set the scene. I used to work a commission sales job, selling mostly cell phones and cell phone accessories. We also sold radios in our shack. I started out as a part-time sales associate right out of college. After a chunk of time, I had worked my way up to store manager. My store was a quiet little place, always last in sales in our region, but I had a great team and we all did our jobs well. I was very attached to my store, seeing as I'd started so low and made it mine through the years. 
It's also important to note that we're right next to a giant grocery store and a Chipotle. Oh, how I missed that. Though being next to a grocery store, I was shopping there often. I knew most of the staff, and they often stopped in my store to chat or browse. Now, the uniform I had to wear was basic. It was black dress pants, a red company-branded polo, and dress shoes. The grocery store was nothing like that at all. We were still often confused for employees there, which at first was terrible, but it became so common that we just dealt with it. I knew where things were, so I would help if I could. And most people were okay with admitting their mistake and moving on. But not everyone. Anyway, on to the story. I was freshly made the manager of the store, so I decided to show some appreciation to my employees and schedule myself for all of Sunday with minimal help. A thanks for being an awesome team and helping me get here sort of deal. And holy was Sunday slow. I decided to wander the store on my lunch and grab some food. Sunday may be slow in my shack, but not here at the grocery store. I'm standing in the drink aisle debating between a soda or lemonade when I notice to my left a small, grouchy looking old man. I think he wants in next to me, so I ignore him and slide over. That's when the old man says, help me. You need to help me. Now. At that I say, uh, what? Excuse me? The old man says, you need to help me. At this point, I think he either needs help with a heavy case, or he thinks I work here. I attempt the former. I say to him, oh, sorry sir, did you need me to grab something for you off the top shelf? The old man replies, no, I need you to stop ignoring me and do your damn job, kid. At that I reply, uh, sir, I, I, I don't work here. The old man says, well, yes you do. So go in the back and grab me more soda. He then holds up a case of Diet Pepsi, and I say, great, enjoy it, I still don't work here. The old man says, stop lying, kid. And here's a side note, I hate when people call me kid, or any variation. The guy kept using it, so I decided that I wasn't going to help this man as I usually would. I say to him, let me explain this clearly enough for you to understand. I do not work here. Read my shirt. That's when the old man says, now I don't care where you work. You're helping me and I need to get going. So deal with it and grab me my stuff. At this point, I've had enough. So I say, all right, sir, you need to stop. Best of luck with your stuff. And I start to walk away. And that's when the old man says, what did you say to me, boy? And here's where this grumpy old bastard just grabs my arm to spin me around as I walked away. And that's when I think, no, no thank you. I smack his hand off my arm and I continue to walk away. And the old man says, don't you dare walk away, kid. He then shouts at me and says, you work at that shack? Well, I'll F off right to your manager if you don't work here. I tell him, great. So the guy abandons his cart at this point, and he follows me through the self-checkout as I paid. We then wander down the plaza and into my shack. Meanwhile, the guy keeps telling me how I'm gonna get fired, and he can't wait to watch it. And I keep as cool as a cucumber, because I knew what was ahead for this tiny man's poor screaming soul. So we enter the store, and thankfully it's empty. It's just my one employee, chilling near the TV display. The old man says, now go get me the manager. I say to him, happy to, but let me clock in, I may as well be getting paid to get fired, you know? The guy screams now, meanwhile my employee's taken notice and he's baffled. I'm normally a calm person and I handle angry customers well and he's got no idea why this is happening, but he's got the sense to just hang out. I clock in and say, alright, what did you need again? The old guy screams at me, the manager, you think this is a joke? You are going to learn some respect today. And that's when I say, Sir, I am the manager. I'm the boss of this store. So my hard work has finally paid off. The enraged, grumpy old man was a gift from whatever cosmic force was watching over me that day. The guy continues to yell and scream. He then asks for the district manager's number, and then he asks for another store manager's number. And he even asked my employee to come fire me. The guy was fine, until he knocked over a register display, and he threatened to destroy more in the store. So I got him kicked out. The rest of the day was pretty smooth. Guys, I will never understand how some people just follow others when they don't get what they want. Like, get a life, sir. If someone can't help you, do like 99.9% .9 of people do, and just find someone else instead of wasting time. Like, even if OP wasn't the manager, like, what's he gonna say to the manager? Fire your employee? I know he works at Radio Shack selling phones, but he refused to get me a case of Pepsi from the back in a grocery store. Some people should really not leave their house.
I'm currently a senior in high school, and over the summer, I spent time away from home studying at a college across country, because I was interested in furthering my studies in art. Since our student ID is also used as a meal pass in the cafeteria and our room key, the school gave us blue lanyards, with the school name printed along the lanyard and a card holder to keep our IDs in. So here's the actual story. A couple of weeks into the art program, I went to the local mall. And since the college is in a small, quiet city, it was pretty much the only place for people to hang out off of campus. Imagine a flood of 200 plus 15 to 17 year olds suddenly all becoming mall rats. I went to the mall alone, and there, I went to Hot Topic, a store for scene slash goth slash emo kids that now also carries stuff from cartoons or animes. I was in there browsing, with my lanyard hanging around my neck, when I hear, excuse me, Thinking it was a customer talking to an employee, I just continued doing my thing. But that's when I heard it again, except louder this time. Excuse me? I kept going. I obviously don't work there, and I'm dressed like I don't even belong in Hot Topic. When again, I hear, um, excuse me? Can we get some help here? That's when I look up, and I come face to face with a middle-aged lady who was quite red, with her daughter cowering behind her. Karen says, you work here and I can't even get your attention? What the F kind of crap hole is this? I respond and say, I'm sorry, I don't work here. And Karen says, okay, so you're gonna lie to me? Is that how they teach you how to treat customers? I say to her, I don't work here, ma'am. And the lady says, yes, you do. You have your keys to that cabinet right there, pointing at my lanyard. I then show her my school ID and say, this is my school ID. I'm attending the college's summer courses right now, and this is the lanyard that was given to me by the school. At this point, an employee finally emerges from the stockroom, and the angry Karen storms up to him, demanding to see the manager, screaming, I want her fired. The employee, of course, says, she doesn't work here. She's a customer. And Karen says, so you're trying to cover your coworker's ass, huh? Well, I will have both of you fired. Again, the employee says, I'm sorry, ma'am, but she doesn't work here. I can assist you instead. The Karen was adamant about speaking to a manager, so Miss Manager was fetched from her lunch break and brought back to the store to talk with her, who's been yelling the whole time. So Manager comes in and says, how may I help you? Karen says, I want them fired. Manager says, all right, could you please explain why? Karen says, I was refused help by her, and he tried to cover for her. The manager says, she doesn't work here. And Karen says, of course she does. She has a lanyard on. The manager tells her, that's the school's lanyard. That's not ours. Ours is black like the one I have holding up his lanyard. Karen then screams, forget it. She then throws her stuff she was carrying on the floor, and she says, I don't want this anymore. She then storms out of the store with her daughter. I was standing in shock the whole time because how could a person be so stupid? I don't even look like I work in the store. I honestly felt bad for the employee and the manager because they didn't do anything to deserve this lady yelling at them. And the manager had her lunch break cut short to face an angry, screaming Karen. I'm still honestly not sure how she could have mistaken me for an employee, though. We wonder that every single day, OP. But hey, without Karens like that, we wouldn't be entertained, right? And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash I don't work here, lady. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the stories. I hope you didn't shake your heads too hard. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's an r slash entitled people episode where Karens think it's fun to steal from people and fight cops. It's wild. Go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.